much for joining me for another Spouse Link live stream. These are designed for military spouses who are thinking about military retirement, going through military retirement, or are crossed over into retirement and are currently living a civilian life, but still maybe not fully certain that you've done everything that you need to do. So the very first thing is I would love for anyone who's here watching with us to just give me a little shout out. Tell me where you're joining us from. Um, just a quick introduction. My name is Anna Larson. I'm a copywriter by trade and digital marketer. I'm a homeschool mom and a retired military spouse. My spouse retired about eight months ago now. Nope, not even six, eight, I guess eight-ish months ago um, from active duty st status with the United States Army. And it was a real struggle for our family. Part of that was the COVID timeframe and all of that. But I'll tell you, I realized very quickly I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know where to find the answers. And honestly, there just wasn't a ton of stuff out there for me, the military spouse. And so that struggle that I had led me to Spouse Link and to AFMA, which is, if you're not familiar with AFMA, it's the American Armed Forces Mutual Aid Society Association, but AFMA is much easier to say than all of that. Um, but now I get to support other military spouses that are going through this transition process and this retirement process. And the basically the idea is we're giving you better resources, we're giving you more information, and we're building this community of support so that you do have a place to go and ask questions and you do have a place to go and find out the answers. So I am excited today because today we are starting, today is like your introduction to a series of financial shorts that I'm going to be doing about retirement and transition with Sarah Bumgardner. And Sarah is here with us today. I'm going to bring her on in just a minute. But before I do that, I do want to share with you, I want to share with you who Sarah is. So just a really quick bio before I have Sarah jump on with us. The very first thing is Sarah is a member benefits coordinator with AFMA. Okay. She was a military spouse for 11 years. She previously served AFMA as the senior veteran affairs coordinator in Western Virginia. And then she was also a spouse link ambassador, which is what I kind of do right now for Camp Lejeune area. And then she was also a relationship manager for the AFMA Wealth Management and Trust. So Sarah has been in this finance world for quite some time and specifically working with military families. So if there is someone that knows what we're talking about, it's going to be her. Um, before she joined AFMA, she was the admissions coordinator and medical records supervisor for a skilled nursing facility in 29 Palms, California. She's the mother of two boys. She enjoys spending her time outdoors and helping others. She graduated from Auburn University with a health and hospital administration degree, which, little side note, that's totally what I wanted to do way back when, when I was in college. Um, she also minored in business, and Sarah loves, first and foremost, helping people, which makes sense because truly that is what she's here to do. So without any further comment, I'm going to bring on Sarah. Hi. Hi. Hi, Anna. How are you? <laughs> so excited to have you here. We've got a couple of people that just wanted to pop in and say hi. So we've got Selena from Fort Hood. I know that because she's my friend. Amy, who's watching from Texas, and also Lynn, who's watching from Maryland. So super excited. Thank you, everyone. We're excited to be here and have a conversation, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, well, Sarah, first of all, hospital administration, that's totally what I wanted to do. But isn't it funny how we just end up in totally, completely different worlds than what we think that we're going to do for the rest of our lives? It is. It, it's so, it isn't that college though, right? You go there, you're like 18, you're like, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And then you find out that's not what you're going to do for the rest of your life. <laughs> but I loved being in health and hospital administration while I was, because there was still that underlying helping people, right? You're still yeah. helping people navigate through a system. And so now I just do that, but on a financial aspect and through the military. So it was kind of a nice, nice segue um, yeah. into that, I guess you could say. Yeah, absolutely. So while we are, before we get started, I do have a question for anyone that's watching right now. I am curious, are you confident in your retirement finances? And this of course would be for anyone that's watching that's like a military family. But if you stop and think to yourself, ah, oh, we're nearing retirement four years out, six years out, 
uh, three months from now. Are you confident that you know what you're doing with your finances? Because today we're talking about this new finance mini series that Sarah is going to be kind of hosting for us as the expert, because let me tell you what I am not. I am not an expert in finances. If I was, I think parts of our transition would have gone very differently. <laughs> right? yeah. So, okay. So pop it in the comments. Are you confident in your retirement finances? If not, that's okay. I think you join a very large group of military families that maybe aren't super sure that they know what they're doing. Um, but okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Before we do that, um, Sarah, I, one of the reasons why I really wanted to have you on is because that when you go through finances with retirement, um, you and I brainstormed a little bit about just, well, I was thinking, well, we'll just have a single conversation. But the reality is, is this is huge. This is a huge topic. Like you can't have a single conversation about it. And so um, when I, because when I went through retirement with my spouse, after 20 years, we had very limited options with what we can do. And now all of a sudden we had all of these options, right? Yeah. Yep. And that's, and that's just it. And I'm, I'm, I'm just so glad that we're here kind of today and talking about finances and you've already hit on the major point, which I think is the lack of talking about finances in the military. Um, and so I'm hoping we're going to change all that today in this mini series. And we're going to dive into providing kind of tangible ways that veterans and their families can prepare financially for leaving the service and how to overcome the obstacles you're, you're going to face. And and you also kind of said it so nicely, Anna, that sometimes you just don't know where to ask. You don't know where to ask questions. You don't know what to ask the questions on. And so hopefully through this mini series, we're going to be able to kind of get all those juices flowing and start saying, here are some questions to be asking and then implementing in your specific family situation. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited about it. Um, you know, I, I'm excited about math. What can I say? But that's okay. <laughs> You and me, we do not have that in common. I that. But so I do want to say that as part of this, one of the reasons why I really wanted you to come on with as as a an employee of AFMA is because I know that their finances are touchy, right? People people get a little bit, you know, they there's some anxiety and some angst that go, especially when you're talking to someone, because you never know, do they have my best interest in mind? And so one of the things before we get started is I really want to make sure that we let everyone who's watching understand the fiduciary responsibility that AFMA has. And so Sarah, can you just explain a little bit what that means and why you are an excellent person to have on this show in terms of like providing these best practices mm -hmm. um, as far as military finances go? Absolutely. So, um, you know, when we talk about AFMA, we are many things, right? We're a life insurance company, we're a mortgage service company, and we're a wealth management and trust company. And our wealth management and trust company, like you said, is it's a fiduciary company. And what that means is that they must, and I emphasize must by law, provide the right and best information for a client. So it has to be in the, the client's best interest to move forward. Um, but that's also just really a fundamental of AFMA. The business practice of AFMA is our members know that we're a place where you can ask the question and we have subject matter experts. And if for some reason they don't know the answer, they'll go out and research it and find it for you to inform you. And so, I, you know, I've been a part of AFMA for the last 11 years. And it's because it's, it's a fundamental kind of how we operate as a business is we are here to help. And how can I help? So uh, it's that fiduciary standard that sets us a, a little bit apart and um, allows us to just be able to educate and to be a place of, of asking questions. So. Yeah. And that was really one of the things I wanted to make sure that we pointed out today because everybody's situation is so different. There's not like one one direction forward. And so <clears throat> as we provide this information, it's so important that you take it and then you know where you can reach out for more because it might be just you know, you, everybody has that, just that little twist that says, yeah, but in our situation, there's mm -hmm. this to consider as well, whether it be a child, a disability, a location, 
you know, uh, you know, a divorce, uh, whatever it might also be included in your past that makes a difference specifically for your finances. So <clears throat> thank you for sharing that. I mean, I know that I felt so much more comfortable knowing that there was like this legal responsibility that you had to be like, listen, we improved this customer's life and we can, we prove, we can prove it to you legally that we've done this. I yeah. mean, that just makes me feel warmer and fuzzier for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so let's jump in really quick. We're going to tell you about our four part live stream series that we're going to be doing in January and February. It's a four part mini series. I'm just going to throw this up here really quick so you can kind of see what it is. January 13th, January 27th, February 10th, and February 24th. And in between those dates, we're going to be providing checklists and conversations and extra helps and articles that will then just provide you that extra little bit more of information that you will need. So we're going to talk about each of the four of these. And um, I will show you this again. And then, of course, I will post it on all the different accounts so that you have it as an you know, you can mark your calendar and save the date and the time and all of that good stuff to join us. But before, uh, let's just jump in with the first question. So Sarah, um, what is the biggest concern you've heard from military families going through the retirement and transition process in regard to their finances? Yeah, so that's such a great question. Um, and quite simply, and I've kind of said it before earlier, but quite simply, it's the lack of financial awareness and readiness. And so what I mean by that, though, is that so much of our veterans and the veterans' families as military spouses, you're focused on the here and the now, right? You're focused on what's the mission of today, what's the deployment happening, what's the training out of right now. And it's a bit of a mind shift to all of a sudden think, okay, what does 30, 40, or 50 years from now look like financially for me, for my children, for grandchildren? And so it's a bit of a way of rethinking about your finances. And I think that that's kind of one of the biggest challenges is when you're starting to transition out is that, okay, I now need to plan for 30, 40, 50 years, not just the moment. And I think, you know, as a military community, and especially spouses, you're thinking so much of the, what do I need to get done today? And what's happening right now? Kind of that mission readiness. Yeah. So it's that forward thinking that I think is the, the biggest challenge to, to get over um, and to, to, to try and navigate through. I yeah, I think, I think you hit on a really important thing. We are a very reactive community because things happen that fast. Right. One day he's going to be there for Christmas. The next he's deploying two days after, you know. And so, yes, we are a very reactive community. I think that's super smart. And that mindset is a hard shift to make. Mm -hmm. And it's also hard because you're so used to doing things a certain way within the military. And now you're out and things don't work the same way. And you don't have the same resources. You don't have the same people. You don't have the same structure, I guess, for the way it's worked. So, OK, wonderful. Next question. All right. So now this one. Um, oh, you know, so in the January 13th live stream is about the benefits that you keep and the benefits that you lose. And realistically, isn't this just all the stuff that you have to wait till after you've retired, after you have your VA disability rating done, after you're, you've met with finance for that final pay, like confirmation, because that doesn't even happen until like the week before the retirement, mm -hmm. you know, date is, is, is there. So realistically, don't you have to wait for that before you can really start to like look at the benefits that you're going to have or not have? Yeah. No. <laughs> so quite simply, no. I'm just going to I'm going to say a hard no on that. Um, but it's tough to think about right now. And I think it's just like you kind of we talked about, you know, everybody's thinking about the right now. OK, well, I'm going to this transition office next. and I'm doing this now. Um, and it's no, we should be thinking about this yesterday. We should be thinking about this months ago. And, and you know, in all seriousness, you know, this live stream that we're going to do January 13th is going to show how to think about that and how to think about the real steps to prepare for what you're going to lose. Because you, you can prepare for that. You actually, you know, I can give you a list and tell you these are the things you're going to lose that you've had in the military financially. And what are you going to do with that? So it's it's really about, um, you know, kind of a checklist. It's about communication and it's about preparing ahead of time. 
Um, do you know, can I just, I'm just going to jump in and say, do you know how much I wish I'd had a checklist? <laughs> like, I mean, he had a checklist, right? right. I mean, he had a really giant, long checklist, right? Sure. Yeah. But I didn't have a checklist. There wasn't anything that said, hey, military spouse, you've been doing this for 20 years right along with them. Here's the things that you should be doing to either prepare or support. Right. Mm -hmm. So, OK, can you give me an example of something that a military spouse could be doing that we might find on this checklist that we're going to be giving them? Yeah. So I would say let's start a year. A year before, if you know you're going to be retiring, you're going to have a general idea of when you're going to be retiring. And that can about a year before that, you want to kind of start this list. And I would say there's a few key things here um, is that we want to we need to help our veterans stay on top of their own checklist. <laughs> One of the biggest things we need to help them do is getting their medical medical conditions documented yeah. um, so much. I mean, how many times have you heard, you know, oh, my back hurts, my knee hurts, but it's fine take some Motrin, you're going to be just fine. Okay, well, this is the time now to really assess that kind of the mind body whole thing. We need to get that documented in medical. So sometimes we need to help facilitate that, but it's going to pay off, it can pay off financially for a security for family. So medical conditions documented, starting helping your veteran network. Networking is going to be huge for second career. Most veterans go on after military and they have another career. Start that networking a year ahead. Get your LinkedIn profile up, you know, get all these things. And we're kind of going to go through those checklists to start that process so that when it's down to the, you know, month or whatever that you're going to go, you're like, well, what am I going to do? We should be doing that a year ahead. So yes. I like to use kind of a one year mark to start thinking about things to really prepare. Yeah. And just two little like side notes on that. First of all, I will just personal experience my Eight months ago, my spouse retired and he just had his final medical review last week. So mm -hmm. things are backed up. And I don't know if that's across the country, but I'm guessing it can't be much different in other places. But things are backed up. There's a lot of backlog right now. So that medical thing is super important. I mean, eight months. We were we <laughs> eight months later. We're just now finally getting those last steps of the, you know, medical conditions things put down. But the second thing is, is to remember that as a military spouse, and we've talked about this in some previous live streams, but this is your chance to move on to the things you also want to do. So that networking and connecting, go for it. Like who knows what's out there waiting for you? If you've had like a hobby or a dream or a side hustle that you've always wanted to like just grab and run with, now is your chance, right? Like because- yeah. There's, there's no more deployments. There's no more TDYs. There's no more of that. And things it suddenly just opens up a whole bunch of possibilities. So yeah. I just want to encourage everybody to like jump on that. I love the networking. I think that's super important. Yeah, it is. Okay. So question three, the, well, the question, it's not really a question, but we're going to move on to talking about the second live stream, which is where we're going to talk about budgeting. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, is it wrong for me to assume that after 20 years of military family knows budgeting best practices for their family already? Um, okay. So I'm not going to say wrong. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that would be the right word, but um, what I would say is that the budget that you've been operating on for the last 20 years, it's going to drastically change. That's that's it's going to happen. And it can hit families either in a positive light or it can hit them in a negative light. And so we're going to kind of walk through kind of the stepping stones of starting with the foundations of leaving the service and budgeting. Um, and I think everybody kind of has a negative connotation sometimes about budgeting. Oh, I know how to budget or things like that. Um, but we're going to really look at kind of the fundamentals working our way to an end goal, right? We're all going to want to retire on a yacht one day, right? Let's drive <laughs> to do that. Um, oh, sure. <laughs> right? That's, that's going to be the goal here. We're going to at least try and get there. Um, so, you know, it's starting at those, those foundations and that's really important. It's, you know, you can't, it's, it's like the military, you know, you have to start with the foundations, you know, you have to start as, you know, you have to start as a second lieutenant before you can be a colonel, right? So you've got to, you got to start somewhere. So yeah. that's what we're going to dive into on that one. So give me like just a taste, like what's three takeaways that people will get from this budgeting conversation? 
Sure. So one of the first takeaways is we're going to talk about where to live and what to get paid. Um, and so we're going to dive into tax statuses of various states because now your your whole world's opened up. You can live anywhere, right? Your military is not telling you where to live. So let's look at different tax statuses of various states. And then we're going to look at military pay versus civilian pay, making sure you don't get left behind in that respect. Um, the second thing is correctly making a budget. And so most people don't know the correct percentage ratios that their income should be distributed to reach maximum saving goals. And so we're going to really dive into that just more than a spreadsheet, but actual percentages of how your uh, income should be allocated. And then the third thing is going to be credit. We're going to talk about credit and everybody knows credit. Everybody, I think, feels like they understand it. But when you really dive into it, we're going to talk about the five ways your credit score is made up and the percentages associated with each one so that you can yourself take control of your credit and manipulate your credit score, hopefully for the better. Um, and so those are going to kind of be the three big takeaways we're going to dive into uh, and, and really see. And, and of course, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and make math fun, um, try to make percentages fun uh, as best I can. <laughs> but it's important things. And these are really important things, especially when your whole whole budget is about to change. Your whole income is about to change. Yeah. Now, I have to just say, like, from a personal perspective, I've been managing our family finances for the last 20 years, right? Ever since I've known my husband, we've been married. I've been doing the managing because he, he's all gone, you know, he goes away and then a bill gets forgotten or something happens, right? So anyway, the whole point of this is I looked through the slides that Sarah had um, and some of the content that she was thinking about presenting. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. And especially that credit score thing. <laughs> I know some of this stuff and I consider myself fairly personal finance smart in these areas. So this is not like budgeting 101. This is not like get out your spreadsheet. How much do you spend on food every month? Like <laughs> we're starting at that next echelon. So hopefully you can join us for that January 27th conversation because I think that you will be surprised at how much information maybe you didn't know you didn't know if that yeah. makes sense. Cause that's what I think. And I don't, she didn't, we didn't even talk about it. I just looked at her content and I was like, Oh, I'm definitely attending this one. <laughs> so yeah. and okay. you're like the military spouse, you know, I was a military spouse and you're the one handling all the finances cause they're gone. So that's why um, it's such an important conversation and dialogue that's missing, right? The veterans are getting all these uh, briefs and checklists, but you know, we, there's a whole nother section here that we need to be focusing on. So Yes, absolutely. And and really that does fall that is that really <laughs> for most military families where the spouse is the one that handles those things because the soldier is the one that's coming and going too frequently, right? Okay, so um our February 4th live stream is going to be about the thrift savings plan or TSP as we all know. We love our acronym. So your TSP, right? Likely your spouse is when I say spouse, likely your veteran, I'm going to, I can categorize that, is putting money into the TSP every month um, out of their paycheck. Uh, and really what happens when you retire is you kind of look at it and then you go, what am I supposed to do with this? Right? Like, what do I do with it? So just as a teaser, Sarah, tell us kind of like what we're going to be learning and maybe like a best practice that people can be doing right now while they're in the military. Okay. So um, I love this topic. I really do. Uh, and I'm very passionate about it, right? We're saving for our future. We're saving for that 30, 40, 50 year mark. And so, yes, we're going to be going over TSP, what um, it looks like while your veteran is in service and then things to do outside of service. So what do you do with that TSP? Like you just said, it's sitting there. We're going to go over a number of, of options. Um, one of the kind of teasers we're going to be going over, I guess you'd say, is we're going to look at the numbers of it. So understanding maxing out. That's one of my big things. We're going to learn how to max out and why that's so important um, to max max that out because you, you're going to get an opportunity while you're in the service that you're not going to have somewhere else. So 
Um, that's that's what we're going to look into. And we're also going to go into risk tolerance, which is really important, and understanding now what investing in the civilian world looks like. So we're kind of going to we're going to jump from TSP as it is now, what you can do with it and how you should be maxing it out. We're going to talk about now what is investing in the civilian world look like because yeah. you're now open to a whole new realm of investment opportunities and you're going to be thrown into that. And then your risk tolerance so that you can sleep well at night um, knowing where your your investments are housed, I guess you could say. Yeah. Not everyone is cut out for day trading on the stock market. No. Is that what you're saying to me? <laughs> No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> we're gonna, we're, we're, some people are great at that. Some people can sleep well knowing that high risk, but the majority of us, we, we need a, um, a good plan, you know, yeah. a long-term plan. <laughs> All right, I fully admit being to one of those lo good long-term plan people. Yeah. So just, I just want to toss out there, Sarah and I were talking uh, just prior to the live stream, and one of the numbers that she threw at me that, you know, kind of like made me go, oh, the is that when you're in the military and you're investing, you can invest up to $19,500 per year into your TSP. Mm -hmm. When you are out of the military and you're looking at civilian retirement options, that number drops to $6,000 a year. So if you're active duty right now and not maxing out your TSP to the best of your financial ability, you're losing a huge opportunity that's going to disappear the minute you get out. And I think that's those are big number differences. I mean, that's big a third of yeah. what you can do when you're active duty. So yeah. that's just like one of those little things like, did you know? No, <laughs> we're going to talk about it. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So now moving on from TSP to like yet another one of those hot, hot topics, like every retirement Facebook group conversation, like club, I'm community, this conversation comes up. And so our fourth and final finance live stream short is going to be on the survivor benefit plan or SBP versus life insurance. And I like to say versus because it's almost like there's like this you know, like in the ring fighting thing that's going to happen, which one's going to win SVP or life insurance. But the reality is, is there's smart choices for each one. And maybe even a possibility of both might be what's best for your family. The problem is, I think that so many people don't understand how to calculate that out. And I am not a math person, right? We already discussed that. Sarah is going to be the one that does this, not me, because I am no expert in this area. But if you're at that point where you're having to make that choice, and this is military spouses, your your veteran cannot sign away SVP without your without your signature too. So this is a conversation you kind of have to be part of in terms of SVP. So okay, I'm going to stop talking about it. Sarah. Can you just tell us, <laughs> right? Tell us what we're going to focus on in our SB con SBP conversation and kind of like the takeaways that people will get mm -hmm. um, from this. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I love your passion about SBP because I have the same, you know, passion about it too, because it's, you know, it comes down to numbers again, but and you, you said it wonderfully is that this is a conversation that really has to happen between the spouse and the veteran and both parties need to understand it and they need to feel good about it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show very simply, you know, how are we calculating SVP? How is it calculated? Um, what does that comparison look like to life insurance? So again, in order to understand that, we're going to have to look, you know, down the road, right? If you're going to start paying into something forever, what does that look like financially? And is that the smartest way? And, you know, <clears throat> I always try and, and to be on neutral ground. So I'm just going to present kind of the facts of the math of it. And then people have to take that information and they have to see what's right for them. So I'm going to be able to show, you know, this is what it looks like if you were going to take SVP. This is what it looks like down the road financially. This is what it looks like as a comparison to life insurance. And um, one of the things, you know, we're, we're going to talk about is RMDs and required minimum distributions on investments and how that even can play into your decision about SVP or life insurance. Um, so we're going to we're going to really kind of map. I'm going to map this out 
and best I can and kind of categories. Then now the what does it look like in 10 or 20 years? And then what's it going to look like? Because you're still going to be paying for SVP when you're 70 years old, you know, or 80 years old. What's it going to look like there? Yeah. So we're going to kind of hit three categories, um, which a lot of people, again, aren't really getting that education when they're transitioning out of the military because the military is saying, well, this is what's going to happen to you right now. Right. This is what it's going to look like right now. And so we want to just kind of open the conversation of, but what does my decision right now look like in 40 years? And yeah. is this financially right? So Whew. yes, that's so yeah. that, is, that is so good. Can I just tell you too, because you you're talking and then you said RMD, something minimum distribution. And I mean it's like flowing over the top of my head and not going through my brain. And I'm thinking, I know this is like these conversations are hard for people that are not financially minded or, or, you know, in, enmeshed in this on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm going to throw this back up here. I'm going to show our mini series um, live stream schedule because the point of these mini series is that Sarah's going to be providing these like little bites, bite-sized information that you can take. And then a whole two weeks of like follow-up backup assistance um, from me and SpouseLink and Sarah. And in terms of like, where do you go now? Who can you reach out to? Here's a checklist. Here's the formula. Here's the spreadsheet for you to use. And be there to answer questions and to kind of help you navigate through this process. So if if when she was talking and she threw out that RMD and it went over your head, this is the series for you, because this is where we're going to stop and she, you're going to understand what that means exactly and how how it plays into you ultimately your finances, because this is a big deal. Finances are a big deal when you leave the military. It's like the number one hot topic for every retiring family. Your veteran is losing their job. Their, their income is going away. And so there has to be some preparation that happens because of that. So <clears throat> anyway, I'm just reiterating. I mean, I love this conversation. I so wish it had been there. <laughs> no, well, it's, it's here now. So hopefully we can, we can reach people <laughs> now. But yes, exactly. it's, just, it's a conversation that needs to be had. And, and that's why I, I love kind of how you framed these mini series because people ingest information in shorter snippets and you can actually then walk away and do something with it. Um, and, you know, take a tangible thing away and say, okay, I can, I can take the next week or two and implement this into my plan um, yeah. and then come back and build on it. And so that's why it's a, it's a building. It's we're building all the way up to that, that final, you know, SVP kind of thing. We're, we're just yes. going to build our way there. I love that. Okay. So what should you be doing with this information we just gave you today? I'm talking to anybody out there who's listening right now. The very first thing is put this series on your calendar. Okay. Watch for some posts. Just block out that 1030 time frame. We will not ever go over a half an hour for this mini city. I know I'm at 33 minutes right now, but that was because I chitter chatted myself out in the beginning. So I'm promising you right now, Sarah and I are dedicated to making these short snippets. In fact, we're shooting for between 15 and 20 minutes for getting information out and then having that conversation behind the scenes once you've had a chance to take that and implement it for your personal situation. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we would love for you to just drop in the comments or reach out to me personally or Sarah and let us know if there's a very specific finance topic that we're not covering that you would be interested in hearing about. In fact, um, Sarah has given me a link to, it's basically a little survey about her presentation. Um, so if you wouldn't mind anybody listening right now, if you wouldn't mind going through and just filling this out, if you have additional information, I just posted it in the comments. I'm going to just throw this out here, right here. So it's just a jot form. It's like you literally like two minutes to fill out if even that. Um, and then the third thing is connect with Sarah and me, um, in whatever way that you want. And I'm going to go ahead and move this over. So, you know, Sarah, can you tell everybody how they can connect with you? Absolutely. So um, you can connect, you know, through our AFMA webpage, 
or through LinkedIn directly, you can um, you know, feel free to message me or connect with me on LinkedIn or drop me an email um, right there, sbumgardener at afma.com. And um, I will I'll get back to you and hopefully be able to, to answer some, some questions. And um, yes, the, the job form is great because it, it kind of gives, gives me an idea of, am I talking about things that you're wanting to hear about? Um, because I'm here to help this community. And so, you know, tell me, tell me what you need help with. Right. And uh, let's, let's talk about it. So. Yes, yes, yes. That's awesome. Okay. So, Hey, everyone, thank you so much for joining the spouse link live stream. Um, okay. So remember that spouse link started this series to help military spouses nearing retirement in the middle of transition or who have already retired. This is not just for one specific category and it is for military spouses. We really try and tailor the information to you because there's a lot going out to your veteran, but your part in that retirement process is so important. So I love being a part of their mission to support, inform and inspire. So I'm glad to be here. Make sure you go visit spouselink.org. You can do a search. Spouselink is tied to AFMA. So you can do a search on finance, on PCSing, on, I mean, whatever your question of the day is, and you're going to find so much good information there. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Let me know what topics are on your mind for my 2022 conversations, uh, because we want to touch on all the things pertinent to retiring spouses. And then thank you again, Sarah. What a pleasure to have you on here today. I cannot wait for this live stream series, these finance conversations. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anna, for, for letting me be a part of this and for getting the information out there. And I'm, I'm so excited. I get very excited about these things. Um, <laughs> I get excited about planning and numbers and, and things. So I can't I wait to dive in. Yes. Okay. So everyone, thank you so much. Um, happy holidays. I won't see you again until probably early January when we start our very first. And I'm just going to one last time. So you can make sure you know one last time, January 13th, 1030 Central Time, LinkedIn, YouTube, and you'll see you'll see the links. So make sure and join us. We can't wait to have you. And um, all right. Happy holidays. And we will see you next year.